Hi everyone, this is Deanne Hermes, Director of Digital Learning, and today I would like to share with you how to use the brand new Learn Platform tool. And this is the place where we are now going to house, locate, find, request all of our digital resources. So this is a tutorial today on how that you're gonna use this tool and so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm not going to put this in presentation mode because I'm going to have to switch back and forth tabs. So um, I'm sorry if it's a little bit uh, weird looking. All right. So here we go. Um, so Learn Platform is going to be a tool that we are going to use to be able to determine the approval statuses of our um, online resources. It is a place where you'll be able to share feedback on the different resources. If you like it, if you don't like it, you're going to be able to grade them. Um, and then also a place where you can go to make sure that the tools that you are using, um, if they collect student data, are on the approved list. And if they aren't, this is a place where you'll be able to go and submit a request. Um, I just want to take a quick moment just to say how important that this is. We are responsible for making sure that our the, the data is collected on our students is kept private. And there are a lot of companies out there, educational companies, who refuse to sign a student data privacy agreement, which means that they are not guaranteeing that they will protect student data. So they could sell it to third parties, et cetera, et cetera. So having a student data privacy agreement in place is an agreement between the district and with these um, product companies where they are ensuring that they are protecting our students data and that they have a means of um, disposing of that data and that they are not going to sell that to third parties, um, et cetera, et cetera. So again, really important that if student data is collected, that you make sure that that resource is on our approved list. If it is not, please don't use it until um, it becomes approved. Okay, so how do we use this tool? First of all, you are going to log on to this, um, this website. I am going to go out and show you, it's also located in the Staff Hub. So when you come out to the Staff Hub and you sign in, you're gonna head over here to Staff, and under Staff, you will now see that there's a Learn platform. When you click on that, that is going to take you out um, to this site. So that's one place where you can keep it. The other thing that you can do also is to go ahead and save this onto your bookmark bar. So um, if you click on the little star and um, let me show you a little trick. So first of all, I want to make sure that this is on my bookmarks bar. That's the one that's showing. And under name, if I just have no name on there whatsoever. I just delete that and I click done. What happens is it leaves just this little icon. And I don't know if you can see it here. Um, it's got a little A and it's got a little blue and green circle around it. And that way it doesn't collect a lot of room on your bookmark bar. Then you can just come out here and you can just click on it and it will automatically take you there. So um, I, I found I can collect a lot more bookmarks doing it that way. <laughs> That tip was for free. Okay. Anyway, sorry, <laughs> I digress. Okay. So once you have, um, once you have gone there, the first time only that you use this, there's going to be a couple of different steps. First of all, you're going to see this welcome to learn platform. You are going to make sure you sign in with Google. So we are a single sign on with them. And then you're going to go through the next couple of steps. So you're going to go ahead and make sure you're logging in as an educator and you're going to give the information that is requested of you. You're going to click on the organization. So scroll through until you find Monroe School District and then go ahead and click on this go to dashboard button. And then you will be logged in. And once you're logged in, this is going to be your dashboard page. And this is not the public facing page. So I just want to call that out. We have a public facing page. And at the end of this presentation, I'll show you where that is on the district website. This is our staff product page. And so this is not a link that you want to give out to our public um, and they won't be able to log into it anyway, but this is for staff, not for students, um, so that you can look at the, the products and you'll be able to um, request them and, and do a lot of other tasks that the public won't be able to do with the public link. 
Okay, so once you get here, you're going to be able to see all of the resources on the dashboard and their status. Isn't that exciting? Um, it's just so much better than, than what we were using before. So you'll be able to quickly search for a product, et cetera. I'll show you how to do that here in just a minute. Um, once you're on that dashboard, you're going to be able to see the approval statuses. So let me run through these for you really quickly. If you see the green approved for use, this means that this product has been vetted completely for privacy and it has been approved by the district for use with students and teachers. If you see um, one that says DPA not needed, that means that we, we have reviewed that product and it does not collect student information. And so we do not need to have a DPA um, in our system. DPA stands for Data Privacy Agreement. Sometimes you'll hear SDPA, which is Student Data Privacy Agreement. So whenever you see that, that just means that Data Privacy Agreement. Um, if you see yellow, that means pending. And let me tell you the difference between pending and under review. So under review, as soon as that product has been submitted, then I will go in and change the status to purple, which is under review. And this means that um, when you're looking at it, you know that somebody else has requested that product and you don't need to go through that request process yourself. Once, and, it, and that's only what it means, that just means it's been accepted and it's somewhere in the, it's somewhere in the process of the Monroe School District review. If you see pending, pending means that it has gone through the Monroe School District review process and it has been approved by Monroe School District. However, it's still pending because we need to make sure we have a student data privacy agreement in place with the company. And until we get that student data privacy agreement in place, we cannot officially approve it for use. So if you see pending or under review, these two categories mean that, that um, we're just still in some process. So please don't use those products yet if we're still going through the process of review. And then finally, red means that it's been reviewed and denied for a variety of reasons. Um, we have some tools out there that I know you all are really fans of. We cannot get a data privacy agreement with a company. They refuse to sign one. So if they refuse to sign one, we cannot approve it since they are collecting student data. All right, um, moving on. So how do you access these resources. So I'm going to go out to the learn platform because I want to show you really quickly um, a couple of things. So when you first go out to the website, you're going to see Monroe School District Library. And these are the resources currently that we have tagged in our library. These are the ones um, we have a lot that are currently being used that aren't in this library yet. This library means that they are so far either approved or they're under some review process or they have been denied. But as you look at these, you're going to be able to see um, the different statuses of the ones that we have so far. Now, there's a couple of things that happen when you pull these up. So if you hover over the top of the tile, it's going to give you a little bit of information. So you can click here and you can look under details. And as soon as you look under details, if you want to go to the website, you can. it'll take you right out to the website. It tells you um, the approval status as well as the compliance status. Um, up along the top here, well, I think I'm gonna get ahead of myself. So let me go back here to my slideshow. I just wanna make sure I get everything. So, so, that's, um, so that's how you can how you can get different information from there. Now you can also provide feedback onto these different resources. So as you hover over those, one of the things you're going to see there is grade. That means not, not like grade level that you would use for school kids, but that means what grade does this resource get when it's been reviewed by other colleagues. And, um, and in fact, we can look nationally and see how it's been graded nationally by other educators around the country. So, um, so if we come back here, and we click on, so right now we're in overview. If we click on that feedback tab, then um, that is gonna show us some different feedback pieces. Now, right now there isn't any feedback. So what we can do is, um, now my, my page looks a little bit different than yours because I'm in the admin console. So, um, so 
I could actually push this button and say, I would like to ask our staff to request feedback. So then you might get a form that says, please fill out feedback for this. Anyway, you can look through all of those different pieces. Okay, I'm gonna click on that back to products. So you'll always see that up there so you can go back to the products. And then you're gonna be able to, again, look over these and you'll be able to scroll through the different pieces. Now, um, you'll notice here ABC. Yeah, I know a lot of people love this resource. Um, this happens to be a company that refuses to sign a student data privacy agreement. So it's really important that we are not using anything red um, within our district. All right, let's head back over here. And now I wanna to talk to you about submitting a request. So um, if, you, if you're out here, the first thing you should always do if you aren't sure if a product has been um, vetted or not, is to come up here and search for that product. So let's go ahead and let's look for Canvas. And so we see that Canvas has been vetted and it is approved for use. So you're good to go. You don't have to do anything else. If you happen to search for a product that um, that is in here and it has not been um, and it has not been reviewed yet, or you don't see what you're looking for on here, and you don't see the product on here that you're looking for. And when you search, it doesn't come up. So um, here's one, 28 categories. This one is 28 categories um, for kids, I believe is the full title. But you can see that it doesn't show up in the Monroe School District Library at all. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on this, show results. And as soon as we click on that, then it's going to bring up for us um, nationally that they have this in the database. And so I see it here, this is what I'm looking for. When I scroll over it, down at the bottom, here's a place to request. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that request and it should populate my name automatically, the product name. And then what you need to do is go ahead and click on Monroe School District. Once you do that, it's gonna bring you up a list of several questions that won't take you very long. Please scroll through the questions and answer them. And as soon as you're ready to submit that resource, you're gonna go ahead and click submit. And then you have put that resource through for approval. So it's fairly simple um, to be able to go in and to make that request. Okay, so let me show you here. So this, this is what I just showed you. So you're gonna hover over the resource, you're gonna find request, and then you're gonna fill out that um, the form. Once you have filled out the form, um, oh, and, and this is from Learn Platform. They said, if, if you don't see the product in there at all that you're looking for, um, you'll see this little box, missing product. So if you click on that, then you can request that product nationally. And then they will, they get to it. They say they get to it as quickly as humanly possible to get these onto the list of, um, of resources out there on Learn Platform. All right. Um, and then so check back in a couple days and hopefully they will have it in there for you. All right, so let's talk about once you have submitted a request, what happens? So you submit the request through Learn Platform and then it goes through our student data privacy team for review. Um, let me back up just a minute. As soon as you submit that request, two things happen. One, you'll receive an email that says you have submitted that. So that's confirmation that it is now in the system. And number two, within a couple of days, um, I will go in and I will change that status to purple, which means that that is under review. And that means then that the student data privacy team is looking at that resource. Once the student data privacy team has looked at that resource and gone through all of the steps required and we receive that student data privacy agreement from the company, then a decision will be made and then the status will be changed um, on the Learn Platform dashboard so that you'll be able to see the updated of that. And then you will also receive an email that says the status has changed and what it has changed to. Okay, let's take a look really quickly just so that, um, so that we're really transparent about what happens once the resource has been submitted. So the resource is submitted and the first step is that it goes through Digital Learning Department and in the digital learning department, it is determined um, if that resource collects student data or does not collect student data. If it does not collect student data, then the process stops and that resource is, um, it's that lighter green shade that you'll see as the privacy status on the dashboard, which means that a student data privacy agreement is not needed. 
If it does collect student data, then there's a couple of different steps. First of all, we have an, a state and a national student data privacy consortium that we work through. If this is probably a lot of information, but if a different district has a student data privacy agreement in place with that same company, then we're able to sign on with a little small exhibit E, which speeds up that process significantly, which means that, that we're kind of piggybacking onto that, um, that privacy agreement already in place. So we don't have to go through the whole process we normally would need to go to. Um, a couple of other, if, if there is, if the state, if there's no one else in the state who has one, then we need to reach out to that company and we give them, I believe it's a 28 page document and ask them to sign that legal um, student data privacy document. This can take several weeks up to even several months because some companies have it go through their lawyer team um, and it goes through several processes there. So just know that there are times when we can speed this up quickly. And there are other times when it's going to take a little while to get those agreements in place. And we also have times when the company just won't even respond back to us. Um, and we try several times, but after several attempts, if we can't get a hold of them and they, they don't respond back, usually that will go to, um, to not approved status. A couple of other things. If, um, if this happens to be a request from the CTE department, then this request will be sent over to, um, to CTE for review. Oftentimes, if there is a request for a specific um, special education app or um, product, that will then go through the specialist special services department so that they can review that technology. If it needs to be rostered, it will go through our SIS department. And if this has something to do specifically with curriculum, and this is, um, this is a piece that's directly related to the curriculum, it will go through the IMC process. All right, so once it goes through all the different processes and we have a SDPA in place, then that is when um, that changes over to being approved in the process. All right, so um, a couple of other things I wanna show you. So if you've forgotten what um, resources that you have requested, you can actually go out to your library and you can see the resources that you've requested as well as their status. So you don't have to look through all of them. Let's take a quick peek about what that looks like. So um, here I am out, um, out here on the dashboard and then underneath the Monroe School District Library, you will see my library. When you click on that, you can click under this requested button and this will show you which um, which resources that you have requested and the current status of those requests. Okay, let's move on and let's um, take a look at some other things that you're going to want to know about your library. So once you're in your library, there are some special things that you can do. So let me go back out here. Um, in my library, you can come over here and you'll see this little icon with a person on it, that's for your profile. When you click on that, then you can click here to manage your account. And once you click on that, you're gonna see if you wanna add a picture, there will be a little um, edit button here. You can, you can do that. Um, but here's, here's a piece that you might be interested in. You can create your own library. And when you create your own library, you can make that public so that it creates a link that you can share with parents if you want to share with parents or if you want to link to specific resources that you want to put on your canvas page you can do that and students can click on that and there's those resources so what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and enable that and as soon as you enable that it's going to create this custom url for you and you click on that it takes you out there so you can see what your library looks like but that becomes um, then the website that you would be able to share with parents or wherever you would like to share that. Um, now, there is also, if you would like to share any feedback with the developers, the developers of those resources, you can click that on. If you're not interested, you can just click that off. All right, and then your setting will be updated. Okay, once you're, once you're all done with that, then, um, then you can come back out. Let me see where I am in my... I get ahead of myself here. 
<laughs> okay, let's see. There you go. So that's how you can manage your account and that's how you can create your link. Um, and now I want to talk to you a little bit about the student data privacy piece so you can, um, you can get an idea of what that looks like nationwide as well as within our state. So I'm going to go ahead and come back out here. I'm going to click on Monroe School District. And once I'm here, I am going to um, take a peek at one of these resources. So let's just go to Book Creator. When I click on the details of Book Creator, across the top, this is my overview. We talked about the Feedback tab. Now we have the Privacy tab. When I click on the Privacy tab, this brings up the map. So I had mentioned to you that there are state data privacy consortiums. There's also a national um, data privacy consortium. We work with all of these. Um, it's an ever developing process to really help protect student data. And so we have a lot of agreements um, in place. We can see um, how they're in place with other states, et cetera. Now, one thing that's important to note is if you are interested in knowing how quick that this process is going to take for your resource to be approved, if you notice up here um, in Washington, if you notice um, and hover over the top of it, you'll see there are multiple data sources that likely will tell you, if you scroll on down just a little bit, um, that will likely tell you that other people have agreements in place. So for example, you can see that North Shore has an active agreement in place already. And if they have an active agreement in place and you'll see this exhibit E, that's the quick process. We can do that really quick. That is probably a turnover of, um, of less than a week, just depending on how soon we can get to the review process of this. But that means that's gonna, la that's gonna happen pretty quickly. If Washington is white and there there aren't any um, SDPCs in place, then that means we're probably going to have to go through the process of submitting that 28 page document. And that's going to take a lot longer for the approval process in place. OK, so uh, let's continue on and we'll talk about some additional resources. If you have questions, if you need some extra help in the bottom right hand corner, of the website, you're gonna see um, right underneath my picture here, you're gonna see the little question mark. If you click on that, that's gonna bring up um, some help topics for you and places that you can reach out to to learn platform. Um, they're, they're a great source of support. There are super fast responders. So if you have questions, um, here is the, the email address for you to send those to. So, um, that is the end of my presentation. I'm just going to look really fast, make sure I answered all my, my notes over here. <laughs> um, I, think, I think I may have forgotten to say this, and if I did, then I apologize for going back again. Um, I'm going to come out to the Monroe School District Library. Once a resource has been requested, you're going to notice that the request, uh, let me see one, um, well, it shouldn't be there. I guess I need to go fix this. You will notice that the request button should no longer be there, which means that you won't be able to request that because it's already in the process. So that saves you, here, like here's one that's, that's set up correctly. Um, you won't see the request here because it has already been approved. That'll save you time from going in um, and putting your request through, and that would save us from getting multiple requests for the same one. Okay, so... Um, I think, I think that's about all. So um, I was going to show you on the district website how that you come out and find the public facing one again. So here we are on the district website. And if you come out to department, head over to digital learning and you will find the vetted um, websites. And this is the public facing site. And so this is what parents um, and anyone from the public is going to see. So it gives a list. This is the same list for the most part as you will find on the dashboard. However, you are going to see um, that the ones that are reviewed and denied are not public facing. And that is because we don't want um, something to accidentally go home and a parent sees their child using a resource that has been reviewed and denied. Um, and so we just want to be really careful about that. So on the, the public facing, 
you'll just see the approved for use websites. Okay, and finally, one more um, bit of information I think is really critical, important. I had told you, please don't use any resources that are currently under review or pending um, or that aren't on this list, but we're gonna, we're gonna say, don't do that for right now. So for right now, continue doing as you're doing. Um, we have a lot of data privacy agreements in place that are not showing up on this list right now. We just wanna make sure that the resources on our list are the resources that we use. Um, we have, I wanna say, um, over 800 resources that get used a month. And so we wanna make sure that, um, that the ones that are used and that need data privacy agreements are the ones that are showing up here and not old ones. Um, from three years ago that aren't being used anymore. So um, if you don't see, if you're using a resource with students, please come in, search for it. If you don't see it in our library, please submit a request for it. And, um, but if you've been using it, please don't panic, continue using it. Um, we're gonna hope to have everything in place by the end of the school year so that next fall when we get started back up again, we will have a good solid list here. However, Anything that is reviewed and denied, please do not use those. Um, th those, are, those are the ones right now, starting right now and moving forward not to use. Um, you probably see this one Epic on here, I'm gonna ease concerns. Um, this one, the company would not sign a data privacy agreement and just recently they have agreed to do so. So that is going to be changed over here shortly. Okay, thank you for taking your time to watch this. And please let me know if you have any questions, you can email me. Um, and I know there's things that, you know, as we're piloting this and as we're pushing this out, there's going to be some, some glitches along the way. So thank you for working with us, but I'm really excited. And I hope you are too, that one, that we can really be working together to protect student data privacy. And um, two, that we just have a really good platform that's easy for all of us to use. Thanks so much. Have a really great day.